We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Bezam and Aleph from Maseches Gitten. This is Gitten Daf seventy two A. And the previous summer, the Gemara was discussing the sheet of Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi, in general, says Mili lo mimsrin l'shliach. If you have instructions, you give instructions over to a shliach. That shliach can't give those instructions over to another shliach. And the Gemara had asked, does Rabbi Yossi admit, let's say the person doesn't simply tell the shliach, give the shliach instructions, but it's a case of Omer Imru. Let's say the person actually tells the shliach to tell another shliach. Would Rabbi Yossi admit that in that case, it's not a problem of Mili Lo Mimsrin L'Shliach, and the first shliach is able to give over the instructions to a second shliach in that case? And the Gemara is now asking that it doesn't seem to be true. Rabbi Yossi does not seem to admit that it's effective by Omer Imru. And the Gemara is in the middle of bringing a proof from a Mishnah later on in Masech Gitin. The Mishnah later on, according to the interpretation of Rabbi Yirmiya says that a sofer, it's talking about a sofer signing a get, and there's one other aid on the get, and on that understanding of the Mishnah, Rav Chista says who is the author of that Mishnah, it's got to be Rabbi Yossi, that Mishnah has to be Rabbi Yossi to Amar Mili Lo Mimsrin L'Shliach, who says that in general, when it comes to words, when it comes to instructions those cannot be given over to another Shliach that's the only way we can understand the Mishnah, and Rashi explains Rabbi Yossi, it follows Rabbi Yossi, why? Hilkach Lekel Mechash L'Chorba, the idea over here is, is you don't have to have any concerns over here that you're going to ruin the situation. Why is there a concern according to Rabbi Meir and not according to Rabbi Yossi? The ilu Rabbi Meir, because according to Rabbi Meir, ikul mechash, you have the following concern. Dilma zimnin do amar l'shnayim imru l'ploni v'yichto v'ploni uploni v'yechsmu. Maybe you'll have a situation where a person says to two people, go tell so-and-so to write the get and tell so-and-so and so-and-so to sign the get. V'yazli hani shluche. And now those messengers who the person tells, those messengers go ahead and they mess up the instruction because they're concerned that the sofer is going to be embarrassed. If they go ahead and tell the sofer you write the get but we have other people to sign it, it sounds like they don't really trust the sofer to sign the get. Below Dasabal, they're going to end up signing the sofer as an aid, as a witness on the get without the understanding of the Baal. Meaning according to Rabbi Meir, where you can have a situation where the husband is not directly appointing people, so in a situation where the husband is not directly appointing people, you can have a situation where it comes to ruin because what's going to happen is is that those intermediaries those two people who the husband is telling to tell others they're not going to follow through on the proper instructions because they might be afraid that the sofa is going to be embarrassed so there would be a concern according to Rabbi Meir and there's no way we would ever allow a sofa to sign for that reason but according to Rabbi Yossi there is no concern there's no concern for this because you're never going to have a sofa right again unless he gets direct instructions from the husband. He's never going to hear from an intermediary. And therefore, you're not going to have a problem that that intermediary might be embarrassed and the intermediary will tell the sofer, you sign. That's what Rav Chista essentially said, has to be the pshat of the Mishnah. That's what he said, Rav Yossi, the Mishnah files Rav Yossi, Damar Mili Lo Mimsrin L'Shliach, who says that instructions cannot be given over to another Shliach. And so the Gemara says, that sounds like Rav Yossi would not allow Mili to be given over to another Shliach, even by Omer Imru. Because as the Gemara says, Vizal Kadaitach Moder Rav Yossi Omer Imru. Now, if you think that Rabbi Yossi would, would admit in a situation where the husband tells the shliach to tell someone else, he gives a direct instruction to do that, and Rabbi Yossi says that would be effective and you can have an intermediary giving the instructions to someone else in that case. So again, nafik mina chorba, then you're going to have a situation where it will come to be ruined. The zimnin do amar because again, as Rashi just said, sometimes the person will tell two people, imru l'sofer v'yichto v'leploni v'ploni v'yechsimu, go tell that scribe to write the get and tell so-and-so and so-and-so to sign the get, umishum kisufa the sofer, and then those intermediaries, because of the embarrassment of the sofer, chayshu mechas milei, they're going to go ahead and instead have the sofer sign, ubalo amar hachi, and the husband never gave that instruction, and so, so therefore it has to be that it cannot be, that it cannot be that Rabbi Yossi admits, by Omer Imru, it must be Rabbi Yossi is saying, that the intermediary can never give over the instructions to another shliach, mili is never given over, mili lo mimsrin l'shliach, in all situations, even in a situation of Omer Imru, and so therefore again, it cannot be that Rabbi Yossi admits by Omer Imru. And so therefore the Gemara now returns to the explanation of our Mishnah. The Gemara had initially suggested that maybe our Mishnah follows Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yossi admits by Omer Imru. And now the Gemara goes back and says, Rather, Ella, rather, Machvarta, 
go back to our original answer, Reisha Rebbe Meir Vesefer Rebbe Yossi. You'll have to say that the beginning of the Mishnah follows the opinion of Rebbe Meir. Again, Rebbe Meir is the one who says that sometimes Mili is Mimsur and Lashliach. Let's say you have a situation where the husband says Tanu and he says that over to a Bezdin, so then they are allowed to appoint someone else to write the Get. That's the inference that we draw from the beginning of the Mishnah. But the Sefer of the Mishnah, that's Rebbe Yossi, because the Sefer of the Mishnah seems to be saying that in all situations, the husband has to has to give the instructions directly to the Sofer. And the Gemara continues with another approach to our Mishnah. Rav Ashi, Yama, Rav Ashi says, Kula Rav Yossi. You could say that the entire Mishnah really is Rav Yossi, both the Reisha and the Sefer's Rav Yossi. And again, the problem is, if the Reisha is Rav Yossi, why does the Reisha seem to imply that in a situation of Tanu, where you have a Bezin, they are able to appoint someone else? And so to that, the Gemara says, Volomi boy Kamer. You have to understand the Mishnah is structured in a fashion of not only this, but even this. And it means as follows. Lomi boy hecha de lo amar tenu. We don't even need to tell you in a case where he doesn't say tenu. In a case where he says kisvu. So there certainly, if he says that you write the get, they have to write the get. They can't tell someone else to do it. Elafilu amar tenu lo. But it means to say, that's what the Mishnah is saying. Even in a situation of tenu, it would not be effective because the Mishnah is following Rabbi Yossi, who says, Mili lo mimsrin l'shliach. Volomi boy hecha de lo amar lebe. Plus, we don't even need to tell you in a case where there is not three people, where he's not giving the instruction to three people. But again, our Mishnah follows Rabbi Yossi. Elafilu amar lebeit lo. Even if he would tell three people, still they can't give the, give over the instruction to someone else to write the get. Velomi boy hecha de lo amar imru. We don't even need to tell you in a case where it's not omer imru. Elafilu amar imru nami lo. Even in a situation where he says to tell someone else, still it cannot be done. Even in that case, we say again according to Rabbi Yossi, mili lo mimsrin l'shliach. And that's why the end of the Mishnah is saying as almost a blank blanket statement, they're never able to tell someone else to write the get. Because again, according to Rabbi Yossi, in all situations, mili lo mimsur l'shlech, it's just structured in a lo mi bai fashion. Not only here it doesn't work, even here, even here, it essentially never works. Rabbi Yossi holds mili lo mimsur l'shlech. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Kivasi de Ravashi, we have a brisa that supports Ravashi. Rashi explains, Tanya Kivasi de Ravashi, Deva Omer Imru Nami Pasar of Yossi, even in the case of Omer Imru, meaning in all situations, Rav Yossi says that they themselves have to hear directly from the husband, they can't tell someone else. The, the messengers, the shluchim, can't tell someone else to write it. We have a brysa that supports this. The brysa says, Kasav sofer l'shma v'chas mu'edim l'shma. Let's say the scribe writes the get. He writes it l'shma. He writes it properly. And the edim sign it l'shma. Afal pisha chasvu v'chasmu unesanu lo. Even though they wrote it and they signed it and they gave it to him. V'nasnu lo. And he gives it to her. Harei ha get bottle. The get is nullified. Because in this case, again, we're talking about a situation where they didn't hear the instruction directly from the husband. This is following the opinion, again, of Rabbi Yossi, it has to be that they hear his voice. That he tells the sofa to write it. He tells the witnesses to sign it. And the Gemara now understands the Bryce as follows. Yishmu says they have to hear him. The point of the Bryce is to say, to exclude the one who says that Rabbi Yossi admits by Omer Imru, meaning the Bryce is saying, even if the husband tells them to tell someone else, that's not going to be effective. The husband has to tell the sofa and he has to tell the Aiden directly. That shows again that Rabbi Yossi does not admit by Omer Imru. And then the Bryce also says, Sheyishmu Kolo, they have to hear the instruction from his voice. So Kolo, when it says his voice, La'afuke midr Rav Kahana Amar Rav, that excludes from the statement of Rav Kahana Amar Rav earlier. Rashi says, La'afuke midr Rav Kahana, to Amar Le'el again, he said earlier, Cheresh Sheyachu Ledavr Mitoch Aksav, that if the Cheresh is able to give the instructions by writing them down, so they don't hear his voice, but they get the instruction because he wrote it down, Kosvin Venosen get Lishto, so then that's considered a good instruction and they can write and give a get to his wife. And so it's saying over here, no, they have to actually hear his voice. It is not going to be like Rav Kahana says that Rav says. It's not going to be effective if he issues the instructions by writing it down. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Zegitech imati, let's say a husband gives a get to his wife and he says, this is your get if I die. Or Zegitech mecholizer, this is your get, again, if I die from this illness. Or Zegitech lacharmisa, this is your get after death. In all of these cases, lo amar klum, he has not said anything. It is not going to be an effective get. Mehayom imati, now if he says it's a get from today, if I die. Mehachshav imati, it says from now, retroactively, it's a get if I die. Harei zeget, that is a good get. 
Now let's say he says, from today and after death. So in that situation, the Mishnah says, get ve'eno get. It's considered a get on the one hand, but it's also not considered a get. And in such a situation, we say, ve'im meis, if he dies, so choletz is v'lo mesiavemes. She should do chalitza, but she should not do yivam, because you have a situation over here where essentially it's a suffix whether she was divorced or not. So it's a suffix whether there's a chiv to do yivam, and therefore she should do chalitza and not do yivam. And the Mishnah continues, Let's say he says, this is your get from today, if I die, from this illness. Then he gets up, he's able to walk in the marketplace, he seems to be better. But then he gets sick and he dies. So so we evaluate him. If he actually really died from the original illness, so then it is a get, because that's what he said, if I die from this illness, it's a get. But if not, if he didn't die from that original illness, so ain't no get, so it's not going to be considered a get. And Rashi explains in Mati Lo Amar Klum, again, if he says, this is your get, if I die, that's not effective. So there it sounds like he's saying, it's going to be a get after the time of my death, and there is no get after death, that's why it's not effective. Let's say he says, this is your get from this illness, means means from this illness and onward. And since he died from the illness, essentially what he's saying is, is that the get is chal, after death, and again, that's not going to be effective. The person is not able to say that a get should be chal after death. May hayom ula acharmisa get veino get. Then it says, let's say he says may hayom, and he also says li acharmisa. That's a suffix whether it's a good get. Mesafkalon itano have may hayom im omus. It's a doubt to us as follows Is he making a condition and saying, from today it's a get if I die? The Kevin Shemes Niskai Matanayim when he dies? The condition is fulfilled. So retroactively, it's again from the time he gave it. Or maybe what he was doing was he was retracting his original statement. He's retracting the Mehayom. And he's saying instead, really, he wants it to be a get. Then it would not be effective. And essentially, the Mishnah treated that like a suffix, whether it's a good get or not. Rashi points out when it comes to a gift, when a person uses this language, you could say that what he's really saying is the principle, the actual land, let's say, you get today, but the fruits that you're going to get, lachar misa. there could be such a division. When it comes to a get, you can't say that's what he means. Now, if he was actually making a condition, he should have said, that should have been the language. When you say, it's not, and it's not clear, you're making a condition. The Gemara will ask, why is this case different from the ratio of the Mishnah? Again, we say you do chalitza because we're not sure if it's a get or not. So therefore you do chalitza because maybe it wasn't a get. Maybe there is a chiv of yibam. But you shouldn't do yibam. Maybe it was a good get and there is no yibam. Now, if, if it was a good get, so really she was already divorced by his brother and therefore you can't do yibam. That's already a prohibition of kares. If you have a situation of marrying the wife of your deceased brother, that would be a situation of kares unless it's really yibam. But here it's not yibam. Here it's a situation of divorce. So again, therefore for it's going to be a problem in that situation. That's why there is no Yibam. And the Gemara says, Alma, we see from the Mishnah, you see from the beginning of the Mishnah when he says, that sounds like he's saying the get is chal, and that's why it's no good in that case. However, but then what does it say in the Mishnah? It says, if the person says, from today, if I die, so then we consider like it's a condition and it all happens retroactively. Or if it says, from now, if I die. So in that situation, you see over there that the phrase, imati, doesn't does not mean to say that the get is me. So we view it as a condition. And so the Gemara essentially is asking, but again, later on in the Mishnah it says, if you say Mehayom Ula Acharmisa, there it's a possible retraction. Over here also we should say it's a possible retraction if you're saying, as the beginning of the Mishnah said, that Imamati is Kela Acharmisa. So then again, if you say Mehayom Imati, maybe it's a retraction, he really means Kela Acharmisa, but that doesn't seem to be the case. In the Mishnah we seem to be saying that it's certainly retroactive in the case of Mehayom Imati or Mehachshav Imati. And the Gemara answers to that, Amr Abaya Abaya says, the phrase in Mati can actually go both ways. It could imply that it's a condition and it means to be retroactive, meaning from now. But it could also mean. 
And so therefore, Amar la mehayom, if he says mehayom imati, command Amar la mehachshav dami. So there it's clear that he means to say from now, it's retroactive. That's how we understand it. It certainly is not considered a retraction of his original words. We say that's exactly what he means. He means the get to be chal retroactively, and this is a condition. But lo amar la mehayom, but if he doesn't say the words mehayom, he just says that this is your get imati, so command amar la lachar misa dami. That's already as if he said that it should be chal lachar misa, and that's why it's no good. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Again, if he says, this is your get if I die, so we say that's not considered anything, meaning to say that's considered a get lachar misa, it's not going to be an effective get. And the Gemara says, Amar of Huna, of Huna says, V'choletzis. In this case, she should do chalitza. And Rashi explains, V'choletzis, Kilomar asura lehis yavi, meaning to say, it's forbidden for her to do yibam in this situation, meaning we have a concern that maybe this is an effective divorce. Essentially, Rav Huna is saying, in a situation where the husband says to the wife, Zeg gitech imimati, even though the Mishnah seems to say, Lo amar klum, it's nothing, but Rav Huna disagrees. Rav Huna says, no, it might be a kosher get. It's possible that in this situation, she actually is divorced, and therefore it's possible that if the husband dies, she shouldn't be doing yibam. And therefore, V'cholet says, that's why she should do chalitza. The mesafkalei have a get ilo, because according to Rav Huna, in a situation of it's a suffix them whether it's a good get or not. All of this will be explained as we go on. And the Gemara continues and says, How could Ravuna say that? In the Mishnah it says that by it's like he said nothing. It's not a good get at all. Ravuna seems to say that it's a suffix. Maybe it is a good get. And the Gemara answers, Lo amar klum da asira li alma, well, yavam nami asira. So first the Gemara says, no, lo amar klum simply means it's not a good get in the, situ- in, in the sense that she's not allowed to marry others. She's prohibited from marrying other individuals because she might not be divorced. But she might be divorced and therefore she's also prohibited to the yavam should her husband die. In other words, the Mishnah really means to say when it says lo amar klum, it really means to say it's a suffix whether it's a good get or not. But the Gemara says that can't be what the Mishnah means. Because at the end of the Mishnah, the Mishnah does give a case of a situation of Suffolk. That's the case over there in the Mishnah where the Gemara thought, where the Mishnah thought it might be considered a retraction, where you say, If a person says, There it's a get, veino get. The Mishnah said again that it's, it might be a get, it might not be a get, and there it said, And so that's what the Gemara is saying over here. From the fact that at the end of the Mishnah it says, There is a Suffolk, and she does Chalet. That sounds like in the Reisha it is certainly not a good get, and she's considered a married woman, and if her husband dies, she would do Yibam. It sounds like it's not a Suffolk at all. Rav Huna seems to be going against the Mishnah. And the Gemara answers, you're correct, and what's actually happening is as follows. Our Mishnah follows the sheet of the Rabbana. Rav Huna, Rav, Rav Huna follows a different Tana. He follows the opinion of Rav Yossi. Rav Yossi says that the date that's in the document that proves the intention of the individual, and therefore Rav Huna is essentially, he is contradicting our Mishnah, but he has what to rely on. He's relying on the sheet of Rav Yossi. And Rashi explains, Masnisen de boy mehayom, our Mishnah, which requires the husband to say from today, meaning if the husband just says, Zegitechimati, our Mishnah is saying it's certainly not good, because Zegitechimati means it's going to be Chala Acharmisi. You have to say mehayom in order to make it retroactive, and it's no good at all if you don't say mehayom. That follows Kirabbonon, that follows the sheet of the Rabbonon, de Pligio led Rabbi Yossi be Yeshnochlin, the Rabbonon arguing Rabbi Yossi and Yeshnochlin, Baba Basra, the Gatani ha Kosev kol Nechasev Livno, because it says, Let's say a person writes over all of his property to his son. He needs to write that in. He needs to write the word mehayom from today. If he doesn't write that, havali maton It's going to be considered like he's giving it lachar misa. get lachar misa. Who here also without the word mehayom, if you say imati, it's considered liachar misa. That's the opinion of the rabbanon over there in Baba Basra. That's why over here, according to the rabbanon, that's why the Mishnah says it's not a good get at all. He didn't say mehayom. It's lachar misa. It's not good. Rav Huna Krav Yossi, Do Amar Hasam, but Rav Huna follows Rav Yossi, who says over there in Baba Basra, Eino Tzarech, in that case, when a person's writing over his property to his son, he doesn't even need to put in the word Mehayom. The Kasavar Zmano Shal Shtar Mochiach Allah, because there's a date in the document that indicates that it's Mehayom. To Mehayom Nasan Lo, Eskofakarka means he's giving him the actual principle, the property from today. Vaperos Yochulu Bechayev, and he'll be able to consume the, the, he'll be able to keep the Peros during his lifetime, meaning to say the father is giving over the actual property, the 
karka today, but he can continue to consume the, the fruits. Because if he wasn't giving him the actual property from right now retroactively, so why write a date? The fact that he wrote a date shows that it's mehayom, shows that he's really giving it from right now. It's not something that is meant to happen. Misa, that's Rav Yossi's opinion, and that's true over here as well. When the husband says to the wife, this is your get if I die, he doesn't mean that it's chal misa because there's a date in the get. Clearly, he means to say that it's going to be chal. Right now, this is a kind of a condition that's going to be chal retroactively. But the Gemara continues, if that's the case, meaning to say, if Rav Huna follows Rav Yossi, so then on the contrary, it shouldn't be again, Rav Huna said it's a suffolk whether it's a good get, but Rav Yossi seems to be saying it is certainly something that's going to work retroactively, mehayom. And so that's why the Gemara asks, e Rabbi Yossi, if you're saying Rav Huna follows Rabbi Yossi, Chalitza nami lo tibay, she shouldn't even require Chalitza. We should, say, we should say that it's certainly going to be an effective Gerashin, and there's no obligation of Yibam or Chalitza whatsoever. Why is Rav Huna treating it like a Suffolk where she should do Chalitza? And the Gemara says, if you're going to say Mesaf Kalei Rav Huna, that Rav Huna is in doubt as follows. Maybe he has a doubt. Is the Halacha like Rav Yossi or not? But that's not true either. Is he really in doubt who the Halacha follows? But Rav Baravu, he was sick. Rav Huna of Rav Nachman and Rav Huna and Rav Nachman, they went to visit Rav Baravu when he was ill. Amrle Rav Huna Rav Nachman, so Rav Huna said to Rav Nachman, Boy, me name, Rav Baravu, ask Rav Baravu, Halacha Rav Yossi, or ain't Halacha, ask him if the Halacha is like Rav Yossi, or the Halacha is not like Rav Yossi. Amr Le, he said back to him, Time with Rav Yossi, I don't understand the reasoning of Rav Yossi. Meaning to say, I don't understand why you don't need to write Mehayom. Halacha, boy, me now, I'm going to I'm going to ask him who the halacha is like. Amar Le, he said to him, At boy mine halacha. You ask him who the halacha follows. And in terms of the reason of Rabbi Yossi, I'll explain to you, I'll tell you the reason of Rabbi Yossi. So boy mine, so he asked him the question. Amar Le, and he said back to him, This is what Rav says, Halacha Rabbi Yossi. The halacha is like Rabbi Yossi. And so you see clearly from the fact that this was the response, Rav Huna, Rav Huna certainly was not in doubt in terms of who the halacha follows. Rav Huna certainly understood that the halacha follows Rav Yossi. And the Gemara continues the episode, Levasar Danafak, after they exited, Amar Lay said to him, Hainu time in the Rav Yossi. Now I told you I was going to tell you the reason of Rav Yossi. This is the reason of Rav Yossi. As Rashi already explained, to Kasavar Zmano Shal Shtar because Rav Yossi holds that the fact that there's a date in the get that shows that it's all happening from now. It's not something that was meant to be Laachar Misa. And again, in any case, you see that Rav Huna's doubt could not have been whether the halacha was like Rav Yossi or not. And so the Gemara instead says, Ella rather Mesafkale, he was in doubt as, as follows. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Bey's Amid Bey's.